Oh, all right. It is. It's. It's time for another collection of the uh, stuff. There's horrible things this week, and there's not. Not only that, there's horrible stuff that that happened again, and I hate those. Sometimes we get stories on here, and I'm like, that's the only time that shit's ever going to happen. No way that's going to happen but again. That's never the only time. It always only happens. Fucking again. time. Like half of our show is the giant from Twin Peaks. <laughs> it's happening again. again. All right. Simba Miracle was the Gordon Cole of cats because she was loud because she was deaf. Simba's just loud because he's loud. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Now, this one is kind of a repeat, but it's not exactly a repeat. It's sort of like, you know, a repeat plus. Somebody upped the ante a bit. Ooh. which Like a gritty reboot. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually R-rated this time. Um, a while back, there was there's someone who climbed like a crane in Canada and got stuck. You remember her? No. It was April, seven, April 2017. Maybe I wasn't here that week. She had to get rescued after climbing a crane and she got stuck. And you're like, well, don't do that. Nobody's going to do that again. They, they've all seen this is a bad idea, right? No, they just knew she just didn't do it right. Right. You know what? She didn't do it right because she kept her clothes on. Oh, okay. Topless Toronto woman rescued after being stranded at the top of a construction crane. Um, Toronto firefighters had the unusual task this morning of getting a topless woman down from a crane 30 meters in the air, which was at the top of a nine-story building. Emergency services were called to an area of Toronto's Fort York neighborhood uh, where a condo was under construction. While it's unknown why the woman decided to scale the crane, she did so without a shirt, harness, or any safety gear. Uh, District Chief Fire Chief William Bygrave told CBC that it appeared the woman climbed up sometime overnight when there was no security at the construction site. Because you don't expect, in the middle of the night, a naked woman is going to climb your crane. No. It took two hours to get the woman down. I mean, that's got to be the beginning of a porno somewhere. Even better, uh, the crane boom actually hangs over partially on the Gardner Expressway. So there was some concern for her safety. So, you know, middle of the night, you're like, I'm bored. Is Taco Bell open? No. Um, what's on TV? Nothing. You know what I should do? You know what I should do? I should take off my top and climb a nine-story crane. You know, I'm up late a lot. And that's not a nighttime activity I'd considered. I usually end up watching, like, old episodes of Supernatural on Netflix. Yeah, that's a good or one. Or watching too much CNN. Or that's, playing that's my... One cat candy crush game on my phone i had never considered taking my top off and climbing a crane so you're saying that's not a normal activity is it no that's, but it might that's... have to go on the old fuck it list yeah that's <laughs> well she was she wasn't exactly quite you know at that age she was like you know getting it yeah. done early i guess at what age nash she, she was in her 20s when you when you're on your fuck it list that's that's your 60s okay I thought you were making an implication about my age. No. But when, when you're at the point of fuck it, that's your sick. You know why you wait to your 60s? Because when, when you're, you're in your 60s, what? Because you're going to die soon. Well, that. But when you're in your 60s and you do fucked up shit, people just let you. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Look the other way. They're like, they're, he's old. When you're at, oh, it's, it's the perfect time. You hit, if you manage to hit your 80s, you are doing whatever you want. You you are you are stealing a fucking uh, moped from the paper boy. Do they even still have those anymore? You are driving. I worry for the day that he reaches fuck it age because he's kind of already 
mentally there. <laughs> Every mailbox in your neighborhood is going to explode. Like, I worry for when he can actually get away with it. Yeah. He's good. <laughs> He's going to make landmines for squirrels. He's told me, like, if we're ever in a condo, because I don't know if you've ever lived in a condo or <laughs> like a planned community, but the homeowners association is always run by a whole bunch of little old ladies who have nothing better to do but be fucking Nazis about the homeowner rules. <laughs> like, they have nothing better to do, and this is the thing that they do, and God help you if your grass is a quarter inch too high. And he's like, that's going to be my hobby. <laughs> Just ruining those bitches' lives. Wait, let me see the rule book. What can I get away with? So, uh, well, oh, well, you didn't say I can have a naked statue on the front lawn. Wrangling old man Dan is going to be a full-time job. Yeah. While, they, while, while we're on the subject of what can I get away with, uh, <laughs> here's a gentleman from Florida who tried... I don't know how he thought this was going to fucking work. Oh, th this is this is a combination of can I speak to your supervisor plus uh white entitlement. This is this is like peak white people. This was everywhere too. Th this fucking story. I did it on purpose. Man arrested after causing a disturbance at the Orlando International Airport. Jeffrey Epstein was charged with battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting arrest, trespassing after a warning, and disorderly conduct. Oh, is this that guy who said the thing? It is that guy who said the thing. Police said they were called to investigate reports of an unruly passenger at the American Airlines ticket counter just before 6 a.m. Police said that Epstein began to yell when he saw the officers arrive. After talking with police, Epstein began to calm down, became agitated, when he learned the airline was not going to allow him to fly because of his behavior. Police said Epstein took off his backpack, put his hands in the air, and asked officers to arrest him. They don't take a lot of requests, but they will take that one. <laughs> they know that song. According to the affidavit, Epstein then pulled his arms under his chest and remained tense, preventing officers from handcuffing him. All right, which is it? Do you want to be arrested or not? When they arrest you, mind. yeah, the handcuffs are not optional. No, when they, I don't care what you what shit you've seen on TV. If you're under arrest, you get cuffed. That's the rule. Unless you're under arrest in a really large crowd, in which case you get zip tied. Yeah, that's the only time, and it's not really an improvement. During the struggle, one of the officers used pepper spray on Epstein because you're being a dick. Um. Now listen to this bullshit. He said he was trying to make a point about police use of force. He said the disruption was done to prove a point. Quote, if you're going to do this to a white doctor who's 59 years old for doing nothing, then why would black people trust you? And while they were tackling him to the ground, he was yelling like, you're treating me like a black person. Yep. Yep. You weren't trying to prove no fucking point. Because if you were trying to prove a fucking point, you wouldn't have done it at the fucking airport with baggage. No. No, you wouldn't. If you were just trying to prove a point, you would have dragged your crusty old ass to the mall. Or to a parking lot. Or to a liquor store. Or to a movie theater. We, well, you we... wouldn't have gone through all the fucking trouble to pack a bag and go to the airport to pull this shit. What we call this is spin. Yeah. This is after someone does something monumentally bad. They try to come up with a way to use their mouth words to make it not bad. Even though it's bad and we all know it's bad and your, your mouth word, this just lies. You're, you're, you gotta read lies. the rest of the quotes. I'm a conservative Republican. I'm a Trump guy. But until the police fix this problem, I don't blame black people for being upset when they get arrested. Aww. 
Well, Thank it's, you. It's not so Thank much. You, old white man. I'm sure black people will be really, really relieved to have your permission. And it's not really so much that the white people are upset. They're get, the black people are upset. They're getting arrested. It's the black people are upset. They're getting murdered. Right. When getting arrested. That that's. If they're kind of, lucky. They only get beaten within an inch of their life. If they're lucky. Or like having a tail light out. Just, or doing absolutely nothing. The balls on this guy. No dick, but my God, the balls. Yeah. They're just, it, it's just got like, you know, like a little tiny centimeter down there. And then just this. You gotta, you gotta part the balls to find it. Right, right. It's just, uh, just, just two hanging bowling balls in silly putty. That's what's going on there. The balls are like the giant butt and baby got back. Yeah. And the dick is a lipstick right in between them. Yep. Oh. Well, let, mental image for the night. Let's look into some police actually fucking up here, and I don't understand how the fuck Dan's going to be mad. I know Dad's Dan's going to be mad at this one. I can tell certain stories are going to make Dan mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're lucky I'm up late tonight. Florida teen arrested. Florida teen arrested after stealing police weapons, flaunting them online. Oh, you fucking moron. A, this is dumb. Oh, a 17-year-old male has been arrested after police say he stole an AR-15 and tactical gear from a sheriff's deputy's unmarked police car. Which means he was walking through a parking lot, he looked over in an unmarked car, and there's an AR-15 just laying on the back seat. Just goddamn sitting there. So he took it. Which would have been horrible enough that the cops had this AR-15 floating around. In presumably an unlocked car. But then he puts it on an Instagram live stream while dancing to music, according to the Miami Herald. <laughs> Records show the deputy reported the item stolen on August 14th after his leaving his unmarked cruiser at a shopping plaza for a few hours full of tactical gear full and fucking ar-15 well no read off what else he's won nash <laughs> <laughs> among some That's of the items not all among some of the items sold for the cruiser were two loaded magazines a gas mask taser a ballistic helmet and rifle clips you just left that shit in your car and went away? <laughs> hey, when you need a pumpkin spice latte, you need a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> I'm the one in this marriage who actually <laughs> fucking drinks pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> and as a member of this marriage who actually drinks pumpkin spice lattes, I ain't leaving deadly weapons in the car to get them. I will go to the drive-thru. <laughs> I don't even go into Starbucks if I have the cats in the car. Because even if I mobile order and know I'm going to be in there for 30 seconds, I don't want to be that asshole who leaves the cat in the car. I mean, shit, I won't leave, I won't leave my phone in the car under oh. any circumstance. Uh, shit, I won't, I, when I, some, I leave my e-cig in the car because why would I need it inside a building? I leave my e-cig in my car, but I, sometimes I like hide that shit. I like put it in the glove box. So, cause, and that's an e-cig. That's not a fucking AR-15. Couldn't you have at least put like a Walmart bag on it or something? I mean, the kid is a fucking idiot. But I think the bigger fucking idiot is the cop. Yep. Who just left all this shit laying around. Well, I don't know. It's 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 really hard to say who's the bigger... Because is it the idiot who allowed it to get stolen? Or is it the idiot who put it on the internet it's with... the a, idiot who was... Treated. With choreography who was trained and did this anyway. Because he definitely should have fucking known better. Uh, I mean, 17-year-old 17 17-year-old 17 kids are fucking idiots. Yes. Yes. I and was a fucking idiot when I was 17. Apologies to any... I joined the military when I was 17. Apologies to any 17... Thank God we didn't have social media when we were kids. Thank yeah. God! Apologies Thank to any... To Jesus, there was no Facebook when I was 17. If there's any 17-year-old watching right now, number one, this is 18 and only, you're breaking the law, you're going to jail. Um, but number two, uh, apologies to 17-year-olds, but you're kind of an idiot. And you are. you're getting mad right now. I know you're getting mad, 
But, but when you're old like us, you're going to look back and be like, man, I was a fucking idiot. Old shit. In four years, you're going to be, I was a fucking idiot. It's diff- the problem is, even at 21, you're still going to be a fucking idiot. But you're, you're less. Be a different kind of You'll be a idiot. different, yeah, but still. even <laughs> You're still going to be a fucking idiot, but you're going to think you know everything. Right. Because now I'm not an idiot. Right, but you're still an idiot. Here's the thing about people. You're always an idiot. You're always a fucking idiot. You are, and you are always ten years away at any given point from calling yourself a complete fucking idiot. Always. Yeah. Ah, now with that little. I mean, bit of... I choked on water last night and got told off by my cat. So I'm not here to tell you I'm not a fucking idiot because I am. So now, now that we have that uh, that that little bit of philosophy underway. Um, <laughs> Life lessons with Nash and Tara. Here's some retail bullshit. Convenience store customer gets into a brawl with cashier over slow computer. This is from Crestview, Emerald Coast. That's uh, up in the, the West Coast sort of thing. A uh, woman was arrested after a brawl with cashiers at a convenience store. Now, that's bad enough, but wait till we get the details. A store clerk told police in a sworn affidavit that she was an employee and had come back to the store to help a new employee close out the register. 25-year-old woman in line became, quote, belligerent due to having to wait for the computer to restart and began picking up merchandise on the counter and throwing it at the cashier. Because that's the cashier's fault. She can definitely make the computer go faster. She just doesn't fucking want to. The cashier... So, you know, and you know what? I don't blame her for this. If someone was throwing shit at me, depending on the size of the shit being thrown, the cashier sprayed the woman with pepper spray, she told police, and the woman left. But she returned multiple times, at one point bringing multiple other people back with her. What? You You went and got your homies to come beat up the people at the convenience store because the computer was slow. All right, what? Clearly, you didn't have anywhere to be. What? What are you? Are you trying? To, I mean, what were you trying to win? You? What were you trying to prove? Like, clearly, you weren't in a hurry to get somewhere important because you had time to come back. Uh, security footage and witness accounts back up the cashier's claims, so that's good. Um, the woman later told police, "Quote." She has a tendency to get upset and forget things. She's going with the rage blackout defense. She, what are you, who the fuck are you, Marv from Sin City? Like, you're not (laughs) She-Hulk. I I have a tendency to get upset and forget things. Oh, well, that's okay then. Okay, then. We, we're we sorry. You can go home now. It's all good. Oh, and the woman was charged with aggravated battery, a felony since she had already been convicted of battery once before. She gets upset. And forgets things. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't be out in public. I mean... Until you've had some fucking therapy. I I think just about everyone here in America who's watching this is at some point or another in their life worked retail. This welcome to the new American century. We've yeah. all worked retail. Like and, I usually say it should be a law that you're required to work a certain amount of time in like either food service or retail, but I don't think it's going to have to be a law cuz it's just going to be how we live. Yeah. And <laughs> Part of working retail is after you've done enough time on retail, you gain an empathy for anyone else who has to fucking work retail. If you're a human being, anyway. I overtip ludicrously. Yeah. Just because I'm sorry for your life. And it's, you can tell who hasn't worked, re- you can instantly tell who hasn't worked retail. Yep. When they treat fucking service people like this. And they're like, I don't understand why it's so hard. Meh, 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 meh. No. No, yeah, you really don't understand. You've right. never done this shit. 
Retail is one of those things where the, the store will give you just enough equipment, training, and time to get by. Right. They're not they exactly... take some away. Yeah. They're, they're not exactly going for sparkle and shine here. They're just and like... give you little pep talks, like, we're going to do more with less. Yeah. So, so the CEO can get a new boat. This is why they have computers that take 10 fucking minutes to restart, because they're from a decade ago. And the thing, like... It's not even just the mean customers. Because sometimes the customers that aren't even mean are exhausting. I had a woman, I was trying to sell, she was asking me about eyebrow pencils. So I'm talking to her about eyebrow pencils. And she starts telling me that she's, she just turned 80 years old. And I said, oh, that's great. Happy birthday. And she said, no, I wish I was dead. <laughs> I'm in a Sephora, okay? I'm making $10 an hour. And she starts explaining to me how her parents both died in their 70s and she wished she had to because her three children are complete ingrates and she can't afford to live under social security and she can't buy groceries this week. And I'm like, I can't sell you a $20 eye pencil now. <laughs> I don't need that karma. And I'm like trying to convince this woman not to fucking euthanize herself in the Sephora. Uh. $10 an hour. Therapist. So, yeah, don't start shucking stuff. At the, if they pepper spray you, you goddamn deserve it. You were throwing shit at them. Yeah. And it doesn't mention what was gotten thrown. I mean, it could, it could have been like Doritos or it could have been like a 12 pack. Right. And I tell you, you chuck a 12 pack at my head, I'm breaking out the pepper spray. Hell, half the stuff they keep on the impulse buys would still fucking hurt. Yeah. A little lighters and shit. Uh, now we, we, this is that story I was talking about at the top of the show. The one where this, oh, this will never happen again. Kids, you might want to mute during this one. It's, it's not the worst thing we've ever done, but it is kind of gross. Man arrested for allegedly urinating on sleeping fellow passenger during flight to Japan. Come on. Remember when this happened before? Yes. I mean, this should be one you'd have to go, wait, did this one happen before? And you'd think back, but no, this wasn't that long ago. At least the guy, that, the last guy, I can't believe I'm about to say this. But at least the last guy only peed on the seat in front of him. <laughs> a man traveling from Chicago to Tokyo was arrested for allegedly urinating on another passenger. According to local news outlet, uh, Denish Kisoshandra Parik, a 24-year-old engineer, was traveling from Chicago to the Narita Airport on the all-Nippon Airways when he allegedly relieved himself on a 50-year-old businessman who was asleep in the business class section. The crew on board the all Nippon Airway flight retained uh, Parikh and reported the alleged assault to Japanese police. <laughs> the police also told Japan today the suspect drank at least four glasses of champagne and one cup of sake before the alleged incident. When he was arrested upon landing, the suspect denied the allegation and said he had no recollection of the occurrence. I wonder why. Sometimes he has to pee and he forgets things. <laughs> the victim was seated two rows behind him. So that's, that's, he was going for distance there. So this wasn't a crime of opportunity. No, he stood up in the seat and this was... I figure he actually walked two rows away, like... If the onboard bathroom is occupied, there's either another one or your ass can wait. You don't just pee on people. You don't just pee on people. Outside of a mutually consensual, agreed upon relationship. And that's, that's not just a stranger you meet on the plane. No. I mean, at least have the good common decency to wake the bastard up and say, hey, hey, can I pee on you? Can I be on you? What's your safe word? Right. Wake, wake the fucker up first. Ask. Be polite. You never know. They might say yes. 
Maybe. They're probably, they're probably not going to say yes. They're probably not, but one in a million shots, somebody would be like, like you know there's, what? There's like a point zero 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 one chance that they will say yes. You know what? Sure. Sure. Why not? You only live once? Sure. <laughs> I mean, it's business class, so you never know. You know yeah, that's true. Rich but, people are just not like us. Man... I have gotten so drunk. I, I've said, I, I, don't, I, I don't know how many times I've said this phrase in my life. I've gotten so drunk. And yet. Yeah. I have never, never been pee on a stranger drunk. I'm kind of proud of myself. I've never been pee on myself drunk. No. That, that, have that's. Ever, have you ever been pee on yourself drunk? No. Oh, okay. okay. That's a good one. That, 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 that's like a gold you star. Surprised. You've been pretty fucking drunk, baby. That's one of those gold stars you, you, you put on yourself, you know, almost for life. Died in Memphis, like <laughs> an almost dying Memphis. You, so I have been very dr- I've never been just like whip it out and pee on someone drunk. No, that is that is an amazing level of drunk. And to get that off four glasses of champagne and one cup of sake, my friend, you are a lightweight. The level of drunk I had to be just to pee in a bathroom in someone's house with other women in it because those bitches wouldn't get out because one of them was crying about something and she couldn't cry anywhere else. Oh. So she was just like, just go. I don't care. I do. Drunk I had to pee just to pee in the room with other women. <laughs> was pretty fucking drunk. And that wasn't the worst decision I made that night, <laughs> but I still didn't pee on myself or anybody else. I just—that's not what you expect when you're on a plane. No. There are there are there are bad things. I expect a motherfucker in the seat in front of me to put his fucking shit back in my face. Yeah. I yeah. expect there to be crying babies. I expect to get stuck next to somebody who's going to try and talk to me. Don't do Some that. Asshole kid behind you kicking the seat. I don't expect to suddenly there's someone peeing on me. That travel is bad enough. Oh you guys. God! Yes, bad enough. It doesn't need to be made any worse. It's already the worst. Uh, we actually have one more tonight. Is that a growling cat? Hmm, I thought I heard a growl. Got one from California. IA. Uh, I. We we keep saying stop stealing the public vehicles. Yeah. Well, someone stole one public vehicle to steal another vehicle. Man steals police cruiser school bus in California on the same day. Man who allegedly stole a California highway patrol car, drove it onto a college campus and used it to commandeer a school bus. Arrested Friday after students on the bus jumped him. Yeah, college students definitely give less of a fuck than you. The 35-year-old Vallejo man was taken into custody by Sacramento police. California Highway Patrol officer was investigating a two-car crash when one driver jumped into the patrol car and drove off. So that's already a thing. Yeah. Because you've wrecked one car already. Now you're like, you know what? I'll just use this one. I'll just take this one. <laughs> I will trade. The thief drove the cruiser to California State University, where he used it to pull over a bus containing 10 student government participants. The bus driver, Mary Speck, thought the man was an officer. He got a little aggressive, demanded I get out of the bus now. So he jumped in and took off with my bus. The man drove the bus off campus and onto Avenue J, where authorities managed to pull him over. When he stopped, one of the guys grabbed him and choked him. When he choked him, I just started hitting him, took the keys, turned it off, and threw the car in park. <laughs> That's some badass student government. The students fled while bystanders held the door bus doors closed so the suspect couldn't escape. What the fuck were you thinking? I mean, I guess clearly he had to steal the cop car so that he wouldn't be late to carjack the bus? The bus! It's a- like, what happened here? <laughs> Why? Was that your schedule for the day and you just couldn't miss that buzz? Did look, it have the Declaration of Independence on it? Look, 
look, you already stole a cop car. Yeah. Why would you need a bus? Why would you need a college student government? <laughs> that was it. Oh, my God. This was a coup. <laughs> he was trying to overthrow the San Joaquin Delta College student government. <laughs> Political terrorism. <laughs> oh god damn it. They need some secret service up in that shit. And I love how they held the bus door closed. They tried to get out. He's like, no, no, I'm leaving yeah. now. I'm you're, done. You're a motherfucker. No, no, but no, no, I don't want to play anymore. You get on our bus and stage a coup? No, game over. I want to go home. No, no, it's, it's, no, I'm done now. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. No. I'm going home You're now. To, to wreck your car, steal the car of the cop who comes to the car wreck, then steal. All right, all right, all right, let's, let's pause. To, I can kind of get stealing the cop car. No, follow, follow me on this. If you were in trouble, if you were the cause of the accident, if you didn't want to lose your license, then if you steal the cop car, the cop can't report. Yeah, but here's the thing. You stole a cop car then. Yeah, okay, yeah. So you're in more trouble. Okay, yeah. You can definitely track those. Well, what you want to do is immediately get rid of the cop car and run away, and you're done. I don't think that would work, honey. Okay, but I that kind of that kind of makes a little bit of stupid sense. I mean, it really doesn't. It, stupid sense. It makes some stupid sense. Okay, but why the bus? You know, what the what did the bus do to you? How did the bus get involved in this bullshit? <laughs> the bus was minding it, so the bus was not involved. We've said it before. Grand Theft Auto is not a LARP. <laughs> and no point are you going to find a car that has a rocket launcher and be able to shoot a whale. Time out. Time out. I want to talk to Storyteller. Time out. Yeah. <laughs> what fuck? Jesus Christ. So, okay. I, the first thing we learned this week is... um. GTA is not a LARP, I guess, is the best way. Because yeah. there's no other way to sum that shit up. And don't compound the error. Don't cut it. If you fuck up, just own that you fucked up. Don't compound the error. Yes. Don't, don't be like, no, no, I did this to prove a point. I'm magnanimous. I'm the greatest. I'm a humanitarian. Look at me. I can I totally get away if I steal this cup car. No. We've learned that um, uh, if if you're going to pee on someone, ask first. Ask permission. Ask permission and know their safe word. Ask permission before you pee on <laughs> Why is this a thing I have to say out loud? What is this world? <laughs> this world... Is the fucking mirror verse that we're stuck in because of the Large Hadron Collider. They'd never turn that motherfucker on. Everything would be fine. We've learned that everyone in America should work retail at least once in their life. Yes. It will make you a better human being. It will suck. It will be awful, thankless, underpaid work. But you will come out of it a better human being. Yeah. Accidentally. And with with better with a better poker face. Fun fact: Dan is a psychologist who's like really good at body language and shit. It's per personal point of pride for me that mm -hmm. I can put up what he calls my retail face, and he can't read me. <laughs> like if we're at a family party or at a bar, like he doesn't know if I need to be rescued because my fucking retail face is so good. We've learned that. If you're going to be transporting valuables in your vehicle, like your phone or your your purse or an AR-15, 
Secure that shit. Put that shit in the trunk, god damn it! The fuck were you, you fucking Also, don't dance with stolen guns on Instagram. No. Kids, children. You're you get your memes out of my face. <laughs> <clears throat> We've learned that if you do something really stupid after the fact, you can't just say, no, no, I'm trying to prove a point. Yeah. That doesn't fly. We don't buy your bullshit. No. And finally, if you're in the middle of the night, you decide to climb a crane half naked, um, find some, find a hobby, you know? Yeah. Needlepoint, learn an instrument. Yeah. Video games. Video games, it's a good one. Speed walking. Whittling. Yeah. Anything that doesn't involve your bare tits nine stories off the ground. 4chan. <laughs> that kind of is bare tits nine stories off the ground. Yeah, kind of is. <laughs> yeah.